Oh, hi everyone. Welcome to our Sunday World Meditation Prayer. My name is Dimitrim Rydis, and along with Barbara Martin, we're co-founders of Spiritual Arts Institute. Uh, we're so glad that you've joined us. We do these Sunday prayers to send light to the world and to receive the energy ourselves as well as inspiration. Um, we're going to open with a meditation, so if you're joining us for the first time, just relax, be in a comfortable chair like this, feet are flat on the floor, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and envision about two feet above your head this golden white sun. Heavenly Father, Holy Mother, God, we raise our consciousness into thy consciousness where we become one with thee. We ask to receive that which we need and that which we need to know now. We ask that you down ray to us the purple ray of peace to bring us into the silence of peace, the peace of silence, the beautiful poise of peace, so that we are aligned and receptive to the higher. Thank you as this energy blesses the higher self point, that golden sun above your head, and then to down ray into the auric field, bringing forth that beautiful flow of tranquility, quieting the mind, quieting the body, quieting the soul. For in silence, the soul is most ready to hear. Thank you for blessing the mental area, the mental chakra, bringing in a quietness of spirit, and going even into the brain cells and all the activities of the brain, responding to the impulses of mind. And then to downray this light to the throat center, the power of our words, bringing peace and tranquility to the very tone of our speech. And then to downray this light into the heart center, also known as the hermetic center, the seat of the soul. And here help us to fill the vibrations of our life. so that we are feeling the Divine Presence. And thank you as this energy down rays to our emotional center, the chakra point by our navel, to bring peace and tranquility to all of our feelings. If anything has agitated us emotionally, confused us, perplexed us, to release those vibrations now and feel the divine oneness. And then let it outray through our physical body. Bringing peace to all the organs, the functions, the systems of the body, even down to the cellular level and how the cells interact with each other. and then out through the whole auric field, forming this beautiful 
atmosphere of peace. Thank you for all that you do for us. We thank thee that this is so. So be it. Hey, wonderful. You always let that light sort of equalize. When you finish a meditation, it's good sometimes just to stay in the silence a little bit. Um, well, um, happy Palm Sunday if you're in the Christian faith, and happy Passover in the Jewish faith. Um, here in the Kingdom of Light teachings, we, since we have a, they're universal teachings, but since they've had a, a Judeo-Christian foundation, um, in the metaphysical work, Easter time is a very important time uh, for us personally in terms of our spiritual growth and evolution. And um, it's interesting that, you know, in Palm Sunday, this was the, the time in the story of Jesus where he makes his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Up to this point, he's really been teaching outside the main city, let's call it that. So he gathered a lot of uh, following, especially with the story of the resurrection of Lazarus. He became a massive movement. But going into Jerusalem meant now you're going mainstream. Now you're going to network into a civil, you know, more directly into the civilization energy. So that was a major move to go in there. And how interesting that his initial entry was triumphant. Uh, he was honored, he was revered, he was accepted. And um, he didn't come in on a valiant stallion. Uh, he came in, as they say, riding on a donkey. And not a week went by and we know what happened. Now, it's interesting that some of the very people, and I'm not just talking about the, the leadership at the time, but some of the very people that were singing his praises in less than a week were, con were crying out for his death. And this brings up a very interesting and important point about our journey, our spiritual journey personally. Um, you know, esoterically, the Palm Sunday the, is, the, is the acceptance of the Christ consciousness in our own heart. Now, in our work, we talk about the initiate Jesus and the mission that he was on. And that was certainly part of all this. There's a, there's a collective story here. But for this morning, we wanted to share a little bit more personal. We all have this spark within us that connects us to the divine. It's, it's separate from our, who we are, our soul, but it helps to guide the soul. It helps to steer it. And it's been given different names, but we call it the Christ consciousness. Some in the East have called it the Krishna consciousness. But this awareness, this Christ consciousness, and again, Christ here is a Greek word meaning anointed with divine essence, is what allows us to come into the awareness of our divinity and who we are as divine beings. We are, as a, as a birthright, divine, but we're not aware of it. We, we have to build that awareness. And this Christ consciousness helps us to do it. So the idea of welcoming Christ into your heart is really saying, I am welcoming this consciousness of truth, of divine awareness, and the key to our divine ascension. Now, how interesting that in this story, you had people that were accepting of this one day, but rejecting it another day. And we may ask, well, why would that happen? Why would you accept a presence within you so powerfully and potentially even days later do the exact opposite of that? It seems antithetical. It seems if you had such a powerful experience, 
why would you go another way? Well, we have to realize here that we are mystics in the making. We, most of us have what are called the mixed aura, meaning it has very beautiful energies in it and not such beautiful energies in it. We are a little bit of a conundrum, right? We can have very redeeming qualities and very not so redeeming qualities, and they can exist in the same auric field. And this is the natural process. We have to, as we say, as the saying goes, accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. But what happens is in our journey is we will have these moments of exaltation where we feel very close to the divine. And that is, shall we say, a part of us that is aligning with the divine at that moment. But then when that moment passes, we can sometimes revert back to more less enlightened states. So it is very possible, and all of us will experience this in the journey, where you have moments where you feel, I feel so close to God, I feel so close to the divine. And literally it could be days later that you don't feel that way. And that is a normal process because what happens is we get into these exalted moments, they do bless our aura and they do help to transform it, but then we do have work to do afterwards to realize that when we maybe shift into those other gears, now we're in an area that's not quite so elevated. And that just reveals, not, oh, I blew it, but, oh, thank you, God, for revealing to me the areas where I'm weak. Because when you invite the Christ consciousness into you, it is going to reveal your strengths, but it's going to reveal your weaknesses. And of course, this is why the Christ said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. For he was well aware that these weaknesses were going to happen. And this is what God does. God knows we're going to goof it up at times. But the question is, how well can we rebound? And instead of having these rather extreme, maybe up and down moments, to have a little bit steadier, flow here. And the key is a little bit in, well, at least in a, here, the, the way Christ came in on a donkey, meaning what? In humility. Really, one of the greatest of the master keys of metaphysics and spiritual growth is humility. The understanding of where you fit in the divine plan and how you are unfolding. Because the other thing that happens when you feel these moments of exaltation is you can start to feel like you are there. And the ego can come into the picture and start to say, well, I am this advanced being. I am this God person. And that's where the pride comes in. And that's where the ego starts to encroach upon a genuine metaphysical experience. And as Barbara would say, the worst egos of all, egotists of all, are the spiritual egotists. The ones that think because they have some understanding of the spiritual life that somehow they're special that way. We are all equally precious in the eyes of the divine. We just haven't come to that full realization of who we are, some have more than others. So the act of humility is what's going to keep you steady on the path, especially in those moments where your personality ego will unquestionably try to trip you up. Now, the ray to work with, as we're going to bring in right now, is the deep rose pink. For well, this really helps us to understand our goal is to simply be closer to God. We do not need to glorify ourselves. As we glorify the divine, it will flow through us. And that will be 
our salvation. We don't need to worry about where we stand in the great order of things. Yes, one person may be the architect, the other may be the stone builder. But they're both equally important. And if the stone builder says, no, I have to be the architect, then there's going to be no building. And the stone builder may not be equipped to be the architect at that moment. And that's okay. As long as that stone builder does her his part in what needs to be done, you are fulfilling your part in the grand plan. So don't worry so much about credit or also what others think of you. Sometimes in this metaphysical work, and some of you may experience this already, people may say, what the heck are you doing? Why are you involved with this? It's, it's almost like you're not in that advantageous socially position as maybe you were, because you're following another path. And if you're concerned about what others think or feel about you, then already you're on the losing side, you're on the victimizing side. Be true to you, love those around you, and everything else will simply fall into place. So as we come into this Easter week, and by the way, next uh, Sunday, we won't have this world meditation prayer. We hope that you will join us for our Easter fellowship. It's going to be a little earlier, uh, 9 o'clock Pacific time. But this week is really a good time to reevaluate your dedication to your spiritual path. And what are you willing to sacrifice in that path? What are you willing to give up at this point in your life? Don't answer that question too quickly. Give yourself a moment to really feel that and really say, where am I in this? And you may notice sometimes I really am ready. I'd sacrifice this in a minute. This, it might be a little harder right now. And that honesty is the beginning of this humility that we're speaking of right now to see where you really are in this process, not where you would like to be or where you think you are. Now, the love brings in, of course, the love energy, but without love, well, we know when we are truly in love, we really don't care so much about ourselves. We don't care what we think. We care about the thing we love. And that seems to be the top priority so as we bring in this loving energy, it does get, help us release this feeling of pride, of feeling superior to other people, or that we're at some special advantage or privilege. All those energies we need to let go of as we walk the path. And ironically, the further along you go, the further you climb up the ladder, the more important humility becomes because you are climbing up the ladder. But that's also the time when the ego will try to assert itself more. And sometimes there's a bit of a battle. And as long as you keep your priorities in, intact, you'll conquer those battles. You'll win those battles. Might take a little time, might take a little effort. So we'll bring this down for ourselves. And when we pray for the world, last week we, we prayed, we worked with this beautiful energy of spiritual growth to help those awaken to their growth and pursue it. Here, we'll be asking for the world to really stay with it, to really think long-term in your spiritual growth. This is not prove it to me and I'll believe it kind of a thing. Once it really is in our heart, it's just part of us. It's part of our life. And to, to really see it in, as the 91st Psalm say, with long life will I satisfy God and show my salvation. Okay, we'll bring in this beautiful pink, and we are particularly asking for the quality of humility. Heavenly Father, Holy Mother, God, we enter into thy infinite circle of living light, love, 
and peace. We ask now that you raise our consciousness into thy consciousness, where we become one with thee. We ask to receive that which we need and that which we need to know now. We ask that you downray to each of our higher self points, those golden suns above our head, the magnificent, enrapturing, deep rose pink ray of spiritual love, the love of God. And with this love, we are asking to bring forth and build in our own minds and hearts a quality of humility. To truly understand our place in the cosmos, in the evolutionary process. To relax and enjoy where we are right now not where we were yesterday, not where we might be tomorrow, where we are today. To rejoice in this moment, to accept it, to embrace it, and to know that we are indispensable to the divine process. And from where we are right this moment, we can serve. If we are looking over our shoulder as what has been, we're always trying to look ahead to what might be. We miss God. We miss the present. Certainly we must plan for things but help us to live here and now. For God is speaking to us today. God is blessing us today. And not only us, but everyone around us. Let us enjoy the people in our lives today, the opportunities in our life today, and the challenges in our life, the perplexities, the unanswered questions. We accept all these things. Thank you now as this energy down raised to our mental center. And on this Palm Sunday, we do acknowledge our own Christ consciousness that dwells within each of us to varying degrees of strength and awareness and help us to acknowledge our Christ consciousness, to accept it, and to recognize that it will only bring forth truth and that we are ready to hear the truth to see the truth about ourselves and in those around us. And thank you now as this magnificent deep rose pink blesses the throat center, the power of our words. And here, if we have unintentionally or intentionally spoken, spoken self-aggrandizing words, glorifying the self, however cleverly we may have done it, to release those vibrations, to speak in loving tones of true humility, 
once again to accept where we are at this moment in the divine process and to be able to serve from where we are right now. And thank you as this deep rose pink blesses our heart center, the hermetic center, and let this love reach out into our life. And the activities of our life right now, if we are in leadership positions in any part of our life, or if we are working under leaders in any part of our life, let there be love. God is the employer. God is the employee. Let us serve in whatever position you have put us in, dear Father, Mother, God, with joy, with faith, and with deep humility. And whatever we have accomplished in this world already, let us acknowledge that without you, nothing would have been done. The God within us does the works. Let us release any false pride, again, self-aggrandizement, or feeling of superiority. And let us simply welcome God in our heart with a welcome heart. And as this light is reaching out, especially into our relationships right now, if there's any healing that's needed, any friction in any type of relationship, family, personal, professional, even anything that might appear a bit acrimonious, let love be there. You make the first move. You show the first act of compassion and kindness. Be strong in your loving expression. Be forgiving and be kind. And Father, Mother, God, thank you, dear Holy Ones, for sending this light to the activities of our spiritual unfoldment. How we are pursuing the unfolding of our spiritual life. And especially today, how we follow up and embody inspirational moments that we all receive at some point. So that our expression of divine love is constant. And thank you as this energy, this deep rose pink light, blesses the emotional center by our navel. And here where the ego does use the emotions to give it life. Help us to temper the emotional nature. If it has been riled up by anything recently, especially anything that has ruffled our feathers or hit our sense of pride. 
to release those vibrations now. To feel this humility. To feel what that means mystically to be humble. As you have identified it as one of the greatest spiritual attributes there is, we all must aspire to this more strongly. And thank you as this light outrays through the physical body, bathing the body in love. If we've been at all hard on ourselves physically, pushing ourselves, let there be a gentleness now. And then out through the whole auric field. So that truly we are one body in thy body of divine love. Thank you now for this marvelous work. And also the work that is going to be going on this week. to bless all souls on their spiritual journey so that all of us may resurrect to a higher state of awareness. And now as a united group from our higher self point, We ask that you send the deep rose pink ray to the world. So that others may feel and step into true humility that everyone on this earth understands their place in the divine plan. Humility is an uplifting energy. It's an empowering energy. Cast aside false beliefs that being humble means somehow being humiliated or degraded or diminished in value. or being simply modest. Release those vibrations so that we may all understand what you mean, dear Holy Ones, when you use that word, humility. And where the egos are self-aggrandizing, to help soothe those vibrations. For once we play our part, all of us as a civilization, truly the new day promised will be here. But we have to play our part. And everyone has his own, her own unique role to play. Do not wish you were in another person's shoes. Rejoice in the opportunities that are being given to you right now, at this time, on this earth. And thank you, as the light is also going to those who are feeling despondent right now, 
who do not have enough joy in their hearts. And those that are coming into their own Christ consciousness, let them be blessed by this light so they follow through on those tremendous blessings. And for all the work you're doing for the earth in this coming week, to uplift it, we are profoundly grateful and we remain open and receptive to the holy vibrations and all the work that's going on from the inner worlds. Thank you always as the light of healing touches all who need it right now. Let the light go to our family, our friends, our loved ones, all who are near and dear. Until we meet again, we thank thee that this is so, so be it. Okay. Beautiful. Well, we, we hope to see you next week at our Metaphysical Easter uh, Fellowship. On behalf of Barbara and myself, have a great week. And uh, again, hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much. <laughs>